There is no doubt that Guild Wars 2 is one of the titans amongst the current MMO games consistently captivating players and retaining its status as one of the best in the genre. With its rich lore, dynamic gameplay and ever-evolving world, this game has drawn in thousands and thousands of players over the years, creating a loyal core of veteran players, ensuring its bright future. But what? If you are a complete newcomer and you don't know what to expect from this game. What if you have questions like, what is the story about in Guild Wars 2? Is it pay to win? Which is the best race and profession for a new player? Do I have to buy expansions from the start? How does the combat feel? I will address all of these questions in this video and I will delve into even more topics concerning every new Guild Wars 2 player. Hi guys, I'm Stan KO, a Guild Wars 2 content creator and humble owner of this channel and I would like to welcome you to this video, everything you need to know about Guild Wars 2 as a new player. There is a lot to cover so let's not waste any more time and dive right in. Guild Wars 2 is set in the beautiful fantasy world of Tyria, world that is threatened by the awakening of six elder dragons, ancient and powerful beings that consume magic and can devastate the world. You of course as a hero, you will join the fight against the elder dragons and their minions and also you will deal with some other minor conflicts and mysteries. Of course, you will not confront all six dragons at once. This will happen across three expansions and something called Living World Seasons. These are a series of episodic updates from the past. Each Living World Season add more content and new events uh, to the game and they kept the player base busy between the expansions. The three expansions are Heart of Thorns, Path of Fire and End of Dragons. The game has fourth expansion called Secrets of the Obscure that came out in August 2020. In this expansion, the game's narrative takes completely different direction and you have to protect Tyria from demon-like creatures that are using rifts to invade the world. Talking about expansions, I think it's a good time to say a few words about the Guild Wars 2 business model. The core game is absolutely free, so nothing is stopping you to download and try the game. There is no monthly subscription fee or premium plans of any kind. Of course, the expansions you have to purchase, but they are coming on a pretty reasonable price. The game has something like a cash shop, which offer different virtual items, uh, such as uh, cosmetic convenience uh, and account services, but nothing that will give unfair advantage uh, over other players. In the matter of fact, there are no pay to win elements in this game at all. And the best part is that every single item from the cash shop can be bought with the in-game currency without spending a single buck. Before I continue, I just want really fast to answer a pretty common question that I have been asked while I'm streaming. The question is, do I need to buy the expansions if I just started the game? My opinion is that if you tried the game and you like it, all that you need for starter are the first two expansions, Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire. This will give you access to a lot of content to go through and the most important you will get a raptor mount early on and later you'll be able to work on the rest of the mounts and if that really happened at that point you definitely know if you want to stay with the game and invest in the rest of the expansions with the short guild wars 2 story and business model introduction out of the way now let's continue from the place where every real mmo adventure begins and that's the charter creation screen. Here you can create your own unique hero by choosing from one of the five races, Char, Human, Norn, Azura or Silvari. Each race has its own unique starting location, culture, history and even personality. Now to answer the question, which race is the best for someone who just started the game for first time? I will say that the racial choice in Guild Wars 2 has a cosmetical function and it will have almost no impact on your playstyle except the starting location and few racial skills that I will be honest with you for 10 years I never used. 
On the other hand, choosing one of the 9 classes will be crucial for your playstyle. Each class in Guild Wars 2 has access to different skills, traits and equipment. Their playstyle and combat approach is determined by the use of important profession-specific mechanics and access to different skill types and effects. The professions are not restricted by race or gender, and each one can be damage dealer, support or healer, although some of the professions are slightly better in a specific role than the others. Once profession is selected for a character, it cannot be changed and upon reaching level 80, the character gained the ability to train an elite specialization, which often significantly changes the playstyle of the profession. Each profession has access to three elite specializations available in the expansions Heart of Taurus, Path of Fire and End of Dragons. My personal class recommendation for your first character is between Warrior, Ranger or Necromancer. These professions are beginners friendly, easy to learn and the most important fun to play. Once you have selected your profession, you will be able further to customize your character appearance. There are a lot of options here to choose from, like body type, height, hairstyle, etc, etc. Things that are pretty standard for a modern MMO. You can even dye the different parts of your armor. This is something that you can also do at any time in the game, of course, if you are not engaged in combat. I found this function pretty cool and this is something that even the great king of the MMOs, World of Warcraft, does not possess. There are several game modes in Guild Force 2 to switch different types of players. Players vs Environment, Structure PvP and World vs World. If you prefer exploring and questing, then the PvE mode, which includes the open world, the narrative story missions, dungeons, fractals, strikes and raids is definitely for you. The open world allows you freely to explore the huge game map and discover new places, events, secrets and mysteries. I strongly recommend you to follow the main story quest, this will guide you through the world and you'll be able to learn more about the game's lore and the different characters that you'll meet on the way. The storyline is personalized based on the character's race, profession and background questions answered during your character creation and even branches based on the decisions you have made during your playthrough. Most of the personal story takes place in solo instances, but you can invite other players to join you. Scattered across the vast world, there will be 8 dungeons for you to find and explore. Each of these dungeons is unique experience, offering not only story mode, but also 3 additional explorable modes, with the exception of the Rush dungeon, which is offering 4. This brings the total number of unique dungeon versions to 33. To embark on these dungeons, you will need a group of 5 players, and you have to work together to overcome formidable foes, solve puzzles and unravel the mystery hidden within the depths of each dungeon. The fractals are basically endgame dungeons with scaling difficulty. Again, you need a group of 5 players, but this time the players must be level 80. Successful completion of each fractal will improve your account fractal level, allowing you to attempt more difficult variations. Of course, higher difficulty means greater rewards. The strike missions are 10 player squad based and game PvP instances, where usually you have to fight a single boss, which is more stronger and mechanic heavy than the normal encounters in the game. The strikes are designed to prepare you for the ultimate end game challenge and they serve as a bridge between the open world and raid difficulty. And finally we came to the ultimate end game test of skills and probably best content in Guild Wars 2, that's the raids. Like the strike missions, the raids are 10 players uh, PvP instances focus around challenging combat and mechanics. They are the most difficult content in the game and each raid encounter usually has uh, multiple phases with several unique mechanics which will test your squad coordination and in case you get super good in raiding, some of the bosses are offering challenge mode where you can test your skills even further. 
If you like fast-paced combat and competing with other players, you should definitely try the structure PvP, where two teams of players are engaged in intense arena-style battle. Depending on the style of the arena, the teams can consist of 2 to 5 players. Points are awarded to your team for defeating enemy players, capturing and securing strategic arena points and accomplishing objectives unique to the map. The best part is that you can join a PvP match even if you are not max level. Once in the PvP lobby, all the characters are equalized and all the skills and traits are unlocked. Of course, if you want to use the elite specializations, uh, you will need their corresponding expansions. Furthermore, you will be able to choose your gear stats, which are also equalized. In other words, you will be able to create your own PvP build that fits your playstyle and join the Unga Bunga fun. Among the structure PvP modes are ranked and unranked arenas, automated tournaments, you can also create a custom lobby where you can practice your skills and combos together with your friends. In the world vs world also known as the Miss War, you and other people from your server or world if you like will participate in a grand scale battle against players from two different servers to exert control over map territories and different objectives. You also siege or defend castles and towers, skirmish over resource camps and participate in PvE like dynamic events. All this will happen across five huge maps. If you enter in the world versus world and you didn't hit yet the max level, your character will be dynamically scaled to level 80, but you will keep all the equipment that you acquired so far. So participating in the world versus world at the low levels is not recommendable since the other players will have a huge equipment stats advantage over you. Oh yes, at the moment I'm recording this video, ArenaNet was holding uh, World vs World Reconstruction Beta event, so in the moment you are watching this video, maybe the things might be slightly different from everything I told you so far. What is a MMO game without the ability to equip your character with all the fancy looking gear that not only look good on you, but also makes you feel super OP? Guild Wars 2 is not different from the other MMOs in this regard. Depending on your character profession, here you'll find three types of armor, heavy, medium and light. There are also two sets of weapons that can be swapped on cooldown in combat and a whole bunch of trinkets. Each piece of gear adds bonuses to your character primary and secondary attributes. Upgrade components that grant extra stats or bonus effects can be also slotted to your equipment. The stats numbers and the magnitude of these bonuses depend on the level rarity and the type of the equipment. The rarity of the gear scales like this, basic, fine, masterwork and rare. These are the early game tiers, then in the end game we will find exotic, ascended and of course legendary tier. The max level exotic gear can be crafted or bought from the trading post, it can be also acquired like a random drop or reward and it offers the second highest attribute bonuses in the game. The ascended gear has slightly higher stats than the exotic tier but cannot be bought from the trading post and then we have the legendary tier which has the same stat like the ascended gear but it allows freely to change its attributes and upgrades and thanks to the legendary armory it can be equipped on any characters on your account at the same time. Oh yes, I almost forget the newest addition to the Guild Wars 2 equipment, uh, the relics. They provide special effect to your character with many relics covering the previous uh, bonus effects, uh, popular 6 tier rules from the past. Some of the relics are having updated effects compared to the 6 tier rules they used to be associated with, 
Some of the effects are also brand new and they add more depth and diversity to the character builds in Guild Wars 2. And talking about gear, I should say a few words also about the game's crafting system. In Guild Wars 2 you find 9 crafting disciplines, each discipline can craft different types of items. For example, Armorsmith can craft heavy armor, artificers can craft staves and potions, chefs can craft food and drinks and so on and so on. You can buy new crafting recipes from vendors or acquire them as random drop or as reward from different achievements. But you can also experiment and try to discover new recipes by combining different materials and ingredients in the crafting station. The game's crafting system is super useful and rewarding and it can help you create your own gear and weapons or sell them for profit. You can literally max level a new character using only crafting, of course, if you have enough crafting materials for that. Once you hit max level, the game has end game progression system in the form of different masteries that will keep you grinding. The masteries are basically regional based collection of abilities that will improve your overall in-game experience. Once unlocked, those abilities will provide you with account-wide benefits such as gliding, fishing or riding and improving the capabilities of different mounts. Speaking about mounts, Guild Wars 2 has the best mount system compared to any MMO. In this game you'll find only 9 mounts, but each one of them has specific usage and special abilities. You will use your mounts to explore new areas, access hidden secrets and overcome obstacles. Uh, you can also use them to fight enemies as they have their own combat skills and can deal damage and apply effect. The game mount system is super fun and innovative and I would love to see more devs doing something similar in their games. Even though mix between tap targeting and action combat system is nothing new in the modern MMO world, this was not the case back in 2012 when Guild Wars 2 was released. This game is one of the first MMOs implementing such system and we can easily say that the devs from ArenaNet are one of the pioneers in that area and they definitely nailed it. With Guild Wars 2 you forget about the boring exchange of blows and rooted on one place combat. Every encounter here is a whirlwind of dynamic movement and swift strikes. You find yourself seamlessly executing attacks on a move, while the key to survival in combat lies in your ability to block, dodge and maneuver around your enemies with lightning fast reflexes. You not only have to master your own abilities, but also learn to anticipate and counter the tactics of your opponents. Understanding the strengths and the weakness of the different skills as well as the various boons and conditions and control effects that exist in the game is essential for emerging victorious in the heat of battle. Guild Wars 2 combat system is offering a dynamic and engaging experience that rewards skills and strategy. No matter if you are engaging in epic battles against ginormous bosses or just skirmishing against other fellow players in intense PvP encounter, the combat in Guild Wars 2 never fails to deliver excitement and immersion. While Guild Wars 2 shines with various great features including absence of subscription fee, rich lore and world satisfying combat and unique mount system, it's worth mentioning that it does come with its own sets of flaws. One drawback is that the game does not hold your hand, but this is mitigated by the supportive community and the great content creators uh, such as myself. Additionally, the lack of traditional quests might be disorienting for some of the new players. Moreover, as the time passes, the once beautiful graphics are beginning to show signs of aging. In general, Guild Wars 2 is a great game that is definitely worth playing and if you haven't tried yet, just give it a chance and discover its magic for yourself. So dear friends, if you found the information in this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Comments are always welcome, no matter if they are positive or negative. And if you have questions, 
you can find me every Wednesday and Saturday night after 8 p.m. East European time on Twitch and YouTube. So just pass by, say hi, and I will be happy to have chat with you. And if you like to support my work even further, don't hesitate to smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, have a great one, and I will see you pretty soon.